So, uh, thank you for the presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming today. Uh, my name is David Mocholi. Uh, I work at Nomon, which is uh, a small technology company based in Madrid, focused especially on the transportation and mobility and the use of artificial intelligence and big data. And today I, I will be discussing with you how we can use artificial intelligence to enhance how airports manage uh, passenger flows. So I will divide uh, my presentation in three topics. I will start by uh, uh, stating the problem of management for the airports. Then I will uh, talk about the role of artificial intelligence uh, in that particular case. And then I will just briefly overview a platform, a decision support platform that we have developed at Nomon uh, to give uh, mm, the solution to that particular problem for airports. So regarding the background and the motivation, the importance of uh, the passenger experience is something that has been widely known in Europe for some years. In fact, if we see to the flight path, flight path 2050 document, it says so. And here what we have to think is for the airports, in order to increase uh, this passenger experience, to improve that, pa that passenger experience, they have to be able to characterize the door-to-door -door air travel behavior to uh, design models which are able to satisfy passenger preferences. Until now, this has been done with the passenger service, which have a lot of advantages. For instance, you can collect a lot of useful and very rich information, but they also have some disadvantages. For instance, they have very high cost, or they only cover the party passengers, so you are losing a lot of information there. But right now, with the proliferation of the personal mobile devices, we have an opportunity to, to, to do that in another way. And this is where mobile network data, uh, it's an opportunity in order to increase or to enhance how airports can uh, manage these kind of passenger flows. And in fact, the mobile network operators are already collecting this kind of, of data. So here the idea is what if we leverage that data to understand these mobility patterns. And that's what, what we're doing at Nomon mainly. And we uh, decided this kind of data because it has advantages both over traditional data, like passenger service, but also over more modern data sources, like for instance, GPS data for maps or Bluetooth and Wi-Fi sensors. Now I, I will just illustrate a graphic example of how we can reconstruct this kind of door-to-door -door itinerary uh, for airport users, so you know. Basically what we do is we analyze the different telephone antennas they connect to to characterize their travel. So first we uh, uh, determine the different activities and then analyzing the uh, intermediate antennas, we can reconstruct the different legs of the trip. And finally we can assign a mode of transpor tra transportation. So finally we have the complete door-to-door -door travel behavior. This is just a uh, a visual example of the previous example that I saw. As you, as you are seeing right now, uh, we have a user, anonymous user, which at 7.30 in the morning leaves his house and goes to the work workplace. He stays in the workplace uh, for the working hours, and we will see right now around 3.30 uh, in the afternoon, he's going to head to the uh, airport. In this case, is Madrid uh, Barajas Airport, Terminal 2. We see that in the terminal airport, and then it disappears or appears again in the destination airport. In this case, it's Palma de Mallorca Airport. Now we see that he performs some activities, and finally, he goes to the last destination to spend the night. So, now you understand how we can reconstruct, uh, reconstruct these kind of passenger flows using mobile network data, but now the thing is how we can use artificial intelligence in, in this kind of process. Because at the end, mobile network data offers very good opportunities to enhance this, the way airports can manage airport flows, but it has some limitations. And this is where artificial intelligence comes to place and can uh, help us a lot. For instance, mobile network data lacks some information on a specific passenger characteristic, which is quite relevant for airport managers. And here, artificial intelligence can help us uh, developing uh, some models able to predict that particular variables. We did that, in fact, for the uh, project called Imotep within the CESAR uh, program. Then another use case could be uh, regarding the uh, one of, because in fact, mobile network data uh, only provides historical understanding on past events. 
but it doesn't offer any insights into the future. Here again, we can use artificial intelligence to try to predict or forecast this kind of passenger flows in the, in the airports. And this exercise, we did it within the traveling project, which was funded by the uh, Spanish Ministry of Innovation. So now, coming back to the first use case that I explained it, here what we wanted to do is to predict uh, some characteristics uh, that were relevant to the airports that were missing in the mobile network data. We did that exercise for two relevant uh, characteristics for the airport, which are the treat purpose and the transport mode. But this methodology can be extended to any other variable. Basically what we do uh, here is to uh, use the passenger service to calibrate a matching learning model, which is able to predict that target variable. Once the model is calibrated, we use that model to apply it to the mobile network data. So we can assign to each detected user the variable that was missing. In this case, we did the exercise for the treat purpose and the transport mode. Here I just saw uh, a, a quick um, overview of the results of the model calibration. For the treat purpose and for the transport mode, we see that for the treat purpose, the, the model is behaving very, very good. For the transport mode, it's not behaving that good, but this is because the problem is more difficult. For the case of the treat purpose, it's a binary classification problem, but in the transport mode, we have more variables. But uh, anyway, it's quite good, as you will see in the validation process. So now that the model is calibrated, what we did is to apply it, as I said, to the mobile network data to infer these characteristics that were missing. Here we saw the result for the treat purpose. And as we didn't have any additional data sources, the validation process that we did consisted on uh, comparing the model results with the data that we had from the survey. And this is the uh, results that we are showing below in the table. Uh, as you can see, we saw the, the uh, distribution of the trips depending on the purpose trip, business or leisure, according to the model and according to the service. As you can see, the percentages are very similar, so we can infer that the model is predicting quite well. Additionally, we are uh, showing two uh, figures. On the right side, on the left side, we see um, the state duration. It's the distribution of the uh, trips, depending if it's business or lesser, based on the duration of the stay. And in the other one, we see the same, but based on the weekday. These uh, two variables were the most relevant variables for the model to understand how to classify this street purpose. And you can see that the results make sense. Okay. And now the same exercise for the transport mode. In this uh, case, well, we follow the same methodology, but in this particular case, we had an additional data set, which was the uh, public transport data. So we also use that for validation and for adjusting the model a, li a little bit. Again, in the table, we saw um, the distribution of the different trips segmented by uh, access mode according to the model and according to the survey. Then we also can see how the different um, trips depending on, on the accessing mode and also segmented by place, place of residence. It's included in that particular figure. And on the right, what we uh, do is, as we did have uh, some additional data set, as I said, uh, coming from the public transport, we compared the demand uh, of the uh, activity travel diaries. This is the, the, the activity, um, the demand which was predicted by the model with the real demand that we had and it was provided by us. As you can see, um, it's not exactly the same, but it follows the same uh, patterns which uh, a priori indicates that the model is correctly predicting uh, the observed behavior. Now we arrive to the next uh, use case. This is the case for predicting airport passenger flows. And here the idea was to uh, develop some models which were able first to forecast the future demand and then to estimate the access mode on that future demand. We perform also this uh, case study through the Palma uh, Mallorca Airport case study. Here, we t took uh, uh, historical information from flight schedules and demand, and then we just split them in a calibration and validation data set. We used, we used the calibration data set to uh, train a random forest regressor, and when the model was calibrated, we just used the model to predict that future demand, and we then compared this data with the validation data that we had for August 29, 2019. 
As you can see, uh, the model was behaving quite well with a determinant coefficient of 0 0.75. And we can also see here the correlation between the actual and the, de and the predicted demand for each one of the flights of August 2019. And on the, on the right side, what we can see is the actual um, de daily demand of the airport versus the predicted daily demand. As you can see also, the model is performing quite well. And then the next step was, okay, now that we have the future demand, we want to see, we want to estimate how this future demand is accessing to the airport. So here what we use it is historical information with the mobile network data that we had. That's what we call passenger historical synthetic population. We again uh, had a calibration data set, a validation data set. Again, we train a random forest classifier. Well, in this case, it was a classif classification problem, so it was a classifier. We uh, validated the results, and once the, the, the model was calibrated, we used it to predict the, uh, the ac accessing mode of that predicted demand that we calculated in the previous step. And then we just compared these results with the validation data set that we had at the beginning. Uh, these are the results. Uh, as you can see in the, in the table below, again, we saw the, um, we are displaying here the comparison between the distribution of the trips depending on the accessing mode, okay, for the actual data that we had from the mobile network data and uh, with the predicted results from the model. Also, what we are uh, displaying the graph in, in the different graphs, it's the comparison between the actual and the predicted uh, passenger arrival flows to the airport. As you can see, uh, the trends are quite, quite similar. And just to finish my presentation, okay, I just wanted to present briefly uh, the um, decision support tool that we have developed at Nomen, which basically consolidates all these develop the developments that I have presented today. In addition to other ones that I didn't have time to include it here, but in any case, if you are interested, of course, later on, I can, I can discuss it with you. And as you can see, this was a web-based platform. So you as a user just select the airport you want to analyze, and then you have uh, different options inside the tool. You can uh, display uh, a map where you can analyze the catchment area of the airport to see uh, the total number of travels. You also have a dashboard, that's the, the one we are seeing, where you can explore different characteristics of the trips and also of the user and so on. So yeah, if you are interested, later on we can comment on that. Uh, and that's, that's everything from my side. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> and going outside of aircraft data and going to our, you know, everyday data that we all hold in our pockets. <laughs> uh, Hi, uh, thanks for your presentation. Uh, my first question is about your forecasting model. Uh, so when you're trying to forecast the flows, um, could you tell us more about the features you used to do this? Yes. Right. Wait, what's, sorry. Uh, oh, okay, wait, it was here. This one, right. Yeah, so for, for this, what we used is uh, the flight schedules and the demand data was, was provided by the airport to us. So there was uh, flight, um, we had different variables, we have the flight, the, desti the destination of that particular flight, the number of passengers, and uh, I don't remember right now. We, had, we have several features. Sorry, because I, I was not super involved in that particular exercise, but maybe I can ask later and go back to you if you are more interested in the specific features that we used. Okay, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Hi, um, thank you very much for your presentation. Very interesting. Um, I had a question about uh, the data you use, like uh, the like phone, uh, the phone and the antennas. How do you deal with uh, privacy uh, with this kind of data? Okay. That's, uh, yeah, we we don't have this data our own. We just have contracts with 
mobile network operators. For instance, in Spain, we have a contract with Orange, and we just work in their cloud, and everything is anonymized. So we have this model share, and then we just expand this model share to the whole population of Spain. So the anony anonymity, it's uh, uh, is stored. I mean, it's, we don't break it. The, the drip uh, ah how we do it no because what we do let me just show the methodology uh, we we train the matching learning model with the service okay the passenger service are a service that uh, from time to time they don't have too much frequency uh, in this case Aena because it was uh, the uh, airport manager at, at Valva in Mallorca uh, takes to the, in the airport, so they go to the airport, they answer, uh, they ask people, and they just fill a, a, a data set which is huge with all this information. So we trained the, the, the model there, and then we just go back with this model to the mobile network data, and then we assign there, because the variables are here and here. So like the premise behind the methodology is that the variables in the, in the, um, in the survey, uh, which are also observed in the mobile network data, are relevant to predict that part, that uh, characteristic. So that's the way we do it. <laughs> Thank you very much for the presentation. I have a quick question about the data set you use and the split. Yes. Because I see that you don't have a full cycle of a year, but basically yeah. you train on one particular set, like months, and then you use the basically the tourist month in Palma, in, yeah. in Mallorca to, to, to validate. Yeah. And also whether you tried this model already with post-COVID data now that we have similar conditions? So basically. Good question. Uh, we, we have not tried with uh, actual uh, data yet, but the, the, the question is simple, is because we don't have it. And that, that's the, the same problem that we, we had uh, with uh, the experiments that we conducted at that time. That's why we only used that particular data. In fact, if you see here how the uh, model predicted the demand, what we can see is the model tends to underestimate always the demand, and that's why, uh, that, that's because we use for training uh, months that were previous to August, only for one year. So it's like the model is not capable of understanding the seasonability, and this can be also um, uh, solved if we use uh, data for other years, for August for other years. So maybe the model can understand how it, how it works. But we didn't have this data, so it was not possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now what we are trying to do is to apply this methodology also to other airports and see, uh, because Palma Mallorca, uh, I mean, it's a very specific airport with uh, higher occupancy rates in summer, uh, a lot of, well, you have seen it. Uh, mm, leisure uh, passengers, not that le business passengers, even in summer, I mean, uh, in summer, so, yeah. We will have to do that for sure. Thank you. One last question. Yeah, one more. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, actually, the... Uh, actually, the last question already answered my question, so I okay. just... To, yeah, I just tend to ask, like, um, if you train like uh, different models for different airports and how you store the data, you use Pico or any other kind of database to store your models? Like. Uh, I'm not sure how we will, uh, how have we uh, stored this data, to be honest. Yeah. And you train uh, different models for different airports? Yeah. yeah. Well, right now, no, the exercise was only conducted for Palma and Mallorca Airport. But in the future, I mean, we will have to do it, so we will have to think about that. <laughs> Okay. So my question is actually based on one of the comments you made just now, which is about how do you build a scalable model? Have you done some thought around the various types of, and the, I mean, you've, you've kind of mentioned most of the points on the, how the, the seasonality, the demographic and the specifics of the airport and their operations yeah. vary. Um, but to make it a commercially viable solution, yes. uh, I don't know how much you put thought because you're a software company and clearly your ambition must be to take it commercially elsewhere. Exactly, so, yeah. that's, uh, that's yeah. the point we are working right now okay. to try to uh, see how we can do that. 
right now, uh, for sure, it will, uh, we will need um, some time, some, um, how, how do you say it? Some time to prepare the, the tool for the particular airport. So we will go to the airport, okay, do you want this tool in, in, in your system? Okay, so we will need some months to prepare the tool to be run in your system. But in the future, I don't know, we'll have to think how to maybe do it in, in, in the best way so it can be just plug in, you know, uh, to try to minimize the, the time uh, we need to uh, deploy that particular system in the different airports. So that, that's the challenge right now. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.